Nola Jen here with you. In this episode, we're going to be exploring this area, Bayou St. John, known as Fort St. John. And it's also known as the Spanish Fort. This is a very historic area, and we're going to be exploring this area today. Welcome to Nola Jen. Let the good times roll. In this video, we're going to be covering the history of Fort St. John, also known as Spanish Fort. And that history gets a little more complicated as the entire area around the fort became known as Spanish Fort. And an amusement park and resort area arose around it that is also intimately connected with the actual fort itself. So this isn't going to be a quick history, but we will put timestamps in the description below if you want to jump around between the years. But it is a fascinating history. Human activity at this site where Bayou St. John empties into Lake Pontchartrain can be traced back before a European arrival to Native Americans who built the shell mitten here. French explorer Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne de Bienville and his brother Pierre Lemoyne d'Iberville first encountered Bayou St. John from Lake Pontchartrain in 1699. And the French started their settlement of the area soon after and the French used the old Native American shell midden as the base for a small wooden fort that was constructed around 1701 before the founding of the city of New Orleans. When Louisiana and New Orleans came under the control of Spain in 1762, the Spanish built a larger brick fort at the site of the neglected old wooden French fortification. This was known as San Juan del Bayou, which was later shortened to St. John Fort, and eventually it was simply known to New Orleans residents as Old Spanish Fort. The fort was significantly improved in the 1770s by Baron de Carondelet, who later became governor of the province. As originally built, the fort was approximately 50 feet across and held five gun emplacements. Louisiana passed back to France in November of 1803 when Spain ceded control of Louisiana back to France. Napoleon Bonaparte proceeded to sell the Louisiana Territory to the United States and the Louisiana Purchase. So three weeks after Spain ceded control of Louisiana back to France, Lower Louisiana was ceded to the United States in December of 1803 in the city of New Orleans to become part of the USA. The fort was restored in 1808 as part of the American takeover. During the War of 1812, the fort was garrisoned by Major Plochet's battalion and a volunteer company of light artillery commanded by Lieutenant Wagner. The British decided on a different strategy, so they chose a different location for the Battle of New Orleans and met their defeat south of New Orleans and Chalmette. The fort stayed active until Fort Pike and Fort Macomb were built at the entrance of Lake Pontchartrain, making the old Spanish fort obsolete. Then an act of Congress was passed to allow the sale of all obsolete military sites in 1823. So the fort was decommissioned that same year and sold to Harvey Elkins. Elkins transformed the location of the fort into the Pontchartrain Hotel. In the process of the construction of the new building, the workers destroyed the fort's brick battery and blockhouse built in 1809, parapets, gun encampments, and part of the inner wall. There is some historical debate over if this new building was called the Bayou St. John Hotel or the Pontchartrain Hotel, with the best argument in my opinion being for the new hotel constructed at the fort being named the Bayou St. John Hotel and an already existing older hotel near the fort was named the Pontchartrain Hotel. Uh, this argument was made by Catherine Campanella in her book Lost Lake Pontchartrain Resorts and Attractions, and she has the most detailed and best research information on the fort I've been able to locate. But regardless of the name, this became the first resort to open in the area and became a popular place for the people of New Orleans to escape the city to enjoy the lake breezes during the hot and humid summer months. Elkin subdivided his land that he acquired from the purchase of the fort, at least on paper, into Elkins Borough and Somerville. These two projects took up 20 blocks parallel to the lakeshore. Elkin soon sold the hotel and other properties at the location to a group of his friends, which included John Slidell, who allowed Elkins to continue to operate the business. 
This group of friends formed the exclusive Elkin Club, which included the wealthy elites of New Orleans, who renamed the hotel the Spanish Fort Hotel, where the Elkin Club met to enjoy fine dining, drink, gamble, and host extravagant dances. The Elkin Club is believed to be the first of many private social clubs in New Orleans, but when Elkin died in 1834, the club ended up leaving Bayou St. John a few years later in 1837. The success of the Spanish Fort Resort did not go unnoticed by other entrepreneurs. The opening of the Pontchartrain Railroad on Elysian Fields Avenue in 1831 encouraged Scottish immigrant and already successful entrepreneur Alexander Milne to subdivide his lakefront property of Millsboro to the east of Spanish Fort into competing recreational facilities to satisfy the new recreational market demand, which was now just a train ride away. The new Basin Canal was also constructed in the 1830s, which resulted in additional lakefront access two miles west of Spanish Fort, which also developed competitive recreational facilities that came to be known as New Lake End, which was later renamed West End. By the 1840s, the Bayou St. John Hotel name was back and offered shooting facilities, swimming, billiards, food, and drink. The establishment was known around the time as the Old Fort House, by 1845, two bathhouses were built at the location on the lakeshore. The Carondelet Hotel also opened nearby in the 1850s, and Moreau's Restaurant was known as a popular lakeshore dining spot in the area. During the beginning of the 1870s, the railroads owned the rights of way, land, rails, and most of the improvements in the Spanish Fort area which had gone through a series of owners who demonstrated inconsistent skills in maintaining the resort property. In 1873, control of the Spanish Fort Resort fell to the New Orleans, Spanish Fort, and Lakeshore Railroad, which was organized by Moses Schwartz, who was the owner of a New Orleans foundry that produced railroad engines and supplies. Schwartz used the railroad access to change the resort into a daily amusement park for the New Orleans population. This business was bankrupt by 1876, and in 1877 it was sold to the Canal Street, City Park, and Lake Railroad. Moses Schwartz reacquired the business in 1879 at a sheriff's sale and renamed it the New Orleans, Spanish Ford, and Lake Railroad. Schwartz started hosting music concerts and constructed a music hall, three additional picnic pavilions, a skating rink, improved bathhouses, and a winter garden. A new lake was built with a center island which featured an iron water fountain and the lake was stocked with swans. Noise Restaurant is also notable to mention as it opened in this area around 1874 by the Spanish-born brothers Lorenz and Ramon Alberti on the eastern shore across Bayou St. John from the fort or over the Rhine as locals had started calling the area. This restaurant was known for excellent French and Spanish food with their redfish baked with fresh tomatoes pimentos, olives, capers, and shrimp being one of the most notable dishes. The restaurant was also popular for its romantic garden ambiance. Fire destroyed the restaurant and bar in 1884, and then another fire in 1908 again destroyed the restaurant along with nearly everything else over the Rhine, but the restaurant was rebuilt every time. Additional hotels and bathhouses were continuing to be constructed in the area, by the 1880s, one of these new hotels was named the Sadier Hotel, which was managed by W.S. Sadier, who also controlled the actual fort property at the now sprawling Spanish Fort Amusement Area location. Advertisements for Sadier's hotel emphasized that it was the only first-class resort near New Orleans and had the largest summer theater in the world. Sadier's license was revoked in 1885 for permitting gambling and Moses Schwartz took over the property. Moses Schwartz restored parts of the fort in the 1880s, but poor repairs led to crumbling bricks. The fort remains were a curious attraction, as it was surrounded by the expanding amusement resort, but little more was done to preserve the remains. The dawn of 1880 also saw West End becoming a more popular entertainment competitor to Spanish Fort, which was falling out of favor. The railroad and Spanish Fort Park were sold to the Erlanger Syndicate, which controlled the New Orleans and Northeastern Railroad Company, with Moses Schwartz staying on as director and J.M. Sixus as president. Electrical lighting was installed at Spanish Fort in 1880 to the pleasure of most, but some young people complained that the lights were too bright 
and made flirting with their dates too much of a public display. A new casino opened in the early 1880s, but in those days, the term casino did not refer to a gambling establishment, but instead was where one found refreshments and sometimes amusements. The casino refreshments menu in 1883 offered such fare as turtle soup, chicken a la creole, roast ribs of beef, red snapper au gratin, vegetables, fruit, and ice cream. Musical performances were drawing crowds with the Spanish Ford Opera House being built on pilings far out onto the lake and became quite popular during the 1880s for their free nightly and matinee opera performances. Spanish Ford had been offering children's rides and goat drawn carriages and on the backs of tamer alligators from the ponds before they introduced mechanical amusement park rides in 1884. By this time, Spanish Ford offered improved gardens, a theater, and a concert opera hall. In 1888, a grand theater opened, offering the latest technological innovations, and it was considered as one of the best in the region. Frederick Noland acquired a 10-year lease on the Spanish Fort Resort in 1889 and made improvements to the railroad and resort properties. The opera house was converted to a theater. Over the Rhine restaurant was also opened in 1880 by German immigrants Otto and Ann Toch on the east bank of Bayou St. John, across from the resort. There was no bridge across the bayou, so Otto ferried customers across on a boat. Otto had improved and remodeled his restaurant by 1866. A popular attraction at the restaurant was a Confederate submarine built around 1861 that had been built in the area which had been dredged up in 1878 near the mouth of Bayou St. John and left on the bank. The submarine was placed on display in a wooden berth by the Over the Rhine restaurant in 1895 and in 1908 it was moved to Camp Nichols Confederate home on the bayou. The submarine is currently in the Louisiana State Museum in Baton Rouge. The restaurant passed to Otto's sons, Fred and Otto Jr., and then to his grandson, Freddie, Touche, and Annie, continued to work in the restaurant until it was forced to close due to the land reclamation project of the Orleans Parish Levy Board in 1926. The 1890s saw Spanish Fort fully developed into a complete amusement park. However, the popularity of the location was fading in competition with West End. During the beginning of the 1890s, Spanish Fort was mostly closed as a resort, but became a major recreational and social area for black New Orleans residents to hold picnics and events, and it became a major venue in the development of jazz, as music was brought back to the Spanish Fort Casino and brass bands became more popular. Spanish Fort was mostly closed between 1900 and 1910 due to natural disasters and human neglect. A tropical storm in 1901 damaged much of the area. In 1903, steam railroad service ended the Spanish Fort and it still kept staggering along until October 1906 after the tropical storm had eroded the shore and a spark from a boat engine ignited a wooden building which led to the destruction of the casino and five buildings attached to it. The destroyed casino area was replaced with a dancing pavilion which offered free outdoor performances and music. The property continued to change ownership among different railroad companies. The New Orleans Railway and Light Company was in control by 1906 and developed plans for a belt rail system from West End to Spanish Fort. In 1911, the New Orleans Railway and Light Co. opened an electric streetcar line to Spanish Fort and the attractions were rebuilt better than ever. An elaborate midway was built with restaurants, ornamental gardens, a roller coaster, ferris wheel, music pavilions, and water access for boating, fishing, and bathing. In 1913, a new automobile road was constructed in 1913, allowing easier transportation to Spanish Fort. A new bandstand was also built out on the lake in 1913 and provided with electric lights while the second opera house was torn down in 1914 and the casino was changed to a dance hall. The Ferris wheel and roller coaster along with half of the park were taken out by a storm in 1915. Tranchina's at Spanish Fort was a famous restaurant during this time. Italian immigrant brothers Terry and Joseph Tranchina already had a history in the area as the Tranchina family had operated a hotel and restaurant in West End that started in 1878, where they remained until 1913. In 1888, Terry and Joseph opened a new restaurant in Spanish Fort named The Cottage with Miguel Brissoleri as the chef. The Tranchina brothers moved their Spanish Fort restaurant to a new stucco building with red tile porches that they named Trachina's Miramar in 1913, 
where they were hosting banquets for up to 400 diners and dancers at a time. The restaurant hosted regular jazz performances. New attractions continued to be added to the amusements available at Spanish Fort in the 1920s. Tranchina's restaurant was raided in July 1924 by federal prohibition agents without a search warrant who entered through windows and broke through the screen door to enter the packed hall and they jumped onto tables to smash dishes and glasses. No alcohol was found and the local police arrested the federal agents for disturbing the peace and disorderly conduct. Tranchina's ended its renowned existence in 1925 when the space was converted into a Japanese themed dance hall named Tokyo Gardens. The Spanish Fort radio station was established in 1924 with the call letters WEBP and reached an audience that was estimated to reach 15,000 radios a day. The radio station was owned by the New Orleans Public Service, Inc., which was known as NOPSI, which by this time was the owner of the resort and the Crescent Amusement Company. NOPSI announced on April 1st, 1926, that the last season opening at Spanish Fort would occur on Easter Sunday due to the demands of the Orleans Parish Levy Board that the wharf be removed and swimming banned. The New Orleans Parish Levy Board was starting a huge shoreline reinforcement and reclamation project, mainly in the interest of flood protection for Gentility and Lakeview, but also to create new multi-use waterfront property. When the summer season ended, the rail line ceased operations. Tranchina's restaurant was torn down and the games and booths were all gone. However, many of the rides and some other businesses remained, and the area still became a popular swimming spot despite the swimming ban as thousands were drawn to the area as the new beach took shape. The first Pontchartrain Beach was opened on June 30th, 1928 on the newly reclaimed property east of the mouth of Bayou St. John and was owned by the Lakeshore Beach Company. Pontchartrain Beach was marketed as a bathing resort and a 600 room bathing pavilion was built and the new facility continued to build, adding 23 buildings including beauty parlors, a pavilion, a casino, along with food and drink concessions managed by Felix Tranchina of the famous Tranchina's restaurant fame. The price of admission was free, and the next year the park continued to be improved and enlarged. The old Spanish Fort Park was used to improve parking. Expansion and improvement continued with rides and large events being added in 1930 and 1931. The Spanish Fort Streetcar made its last run to Lake Pontchartrain on October 16, 1932, being replaced by a bus, and the fun continued. The time finally arrived, though, when Pontchartrain Beach was scheduled to be demolished in September of 1938, as it was moving to a new and much larger location created by the reclaimed land in the area that used to be Millsburg. The new Pontchartrain Beach opened in 1939, with the remaining sand beach at the former location of the original Pontchartrain Beach was called for generations afterward the Old Beach. In 1937, Nopsy sold the Spanish Fort property to the Orleans Parish Levy Board, and then the Orleans Levy Board swapped Spanish Fort to City Park for property it planned for building new residential subdivisions on. The historic fort area of Spanish Fort is currently owned by City Park. The Orleans Parish Levy Board's Lakefront Improvement Project ended up creating 2,000 acres of new land. This project radically changed the three historic lakeside communities by moving the shoreline much further out onto the lake. Bucktown, West End, still managed to retain a reasonably close to the lakefront location, and Millsburg was able to reinvent itself with a new beach and the amusement park of Pontchartrain Beach while Spanish Fort found itself landlocked, with a newly built shoreline moving approximately 500 yards further out than it was originally. Spanish Fort was eventually incorporated into the new residential neighborhood of Lake Vista. When the Spanish Fort Resort was shut down in the 1920s, it was all but abandoned except for picnickers. Funds from the Works Progress Administration were allocated in 1938 to excavate and restore the fort to its 1810 condition. During the excavation, WPA workers found the remains of a buried body that came to be known as Sancho Pablo. And a legend arose saying he was a Spanish soldier who fell in love with an Indian woman, but Sancho was killed by her father. So Pancho was laid to rest near the tree where he died. The bones of the legendary Sancho are currently held by the University of New Orleans Anthropology Department. 
Minor repairs were completed on the fort by the WPA until funds were exhausted and the work was never completed. During the late 1930s and 1940s, as the nearby neighborhood expanded, residents were known to have taken bricks from the remains of the fort to build patios and other home projects. In the 1970s, Sonny Shiro, wife of a former New Orleans mayor, led an effort named the Spanish Fort Improvement Project for restoration. Sonny requested residents return the remains of the fort they had taken from the park, and Sonny was reported to have said she knew the fence from the Sadier Hotel of 1895 had been relocated to the 2900 block of St. Charles Avenue. Sonny continued a passionate campaign to stop the deterioration and ongoing vandalism of the fort and to restore it for future generations. Sonny worked with several lakefront neighborhood groups, including the Lake Vista Women's Club and her hopes to convert the site into a park and an open air museum. Sonny did succeed in nominating Fort St. John to the National Register of Historic Places, and it was listed there on February 11, 1983. Unfortunately, Sonny failed in her other goals to protect and restore the fort, and today it continues to slowly decay as it fades away, one drop of water at a time. From my research on this project, I really have to highly recommend Lost Lake Pontchartrain Resorts and Attractions by Katherine Campanella. She really does a fantastic job of documenting what amazing fun times people had in the past in New Orleans and how much of that rich culture has carried through till today. I have a link to the book in the description below and I highly suggest you get yourself a copy. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nola Jet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.